my name is Jake, I'm Jacob Smith, uh, and I am the co-founder and technician for Sonify. So I actually came up with the idea um, of trying to translate movement, specifically dance, into sound when I was in, in uni. Um, and my, my first iteration of that was this crazy, huge jumble of wires here. And the idea is that it basically converts movement into MIDI signals. Um, and it was a really exciting idea, um, really fun to work on but I didn't really have any kind of reasoning behind it, anything to justify. It was just sort of like a fun tech project. And then when me and Adam first met and started discussing this project, um, he started to bring all of these ideas of sonification, I'd never even heard the word before, uh, rhythmic entrainment, and he really gave that justification that the project needed. My name is Adam Berwick, and I'm the creative director at Sonify. Uh, my role mainly is uh, looking into the research aspect of things, um, so looking into ways of sonification and audification. I need to kind of focus on why it might be important to make up sound a certain way or down sound a certain way um, and have a kind of valid reason for why it sounds like that. I also run all the uh, audio recording and editing on the project. We started developing some different prototypes. So this is the first one. Um, and this, this was actually a wired prototype. And it sent um, acceleration data, basically, through a cable. Uh, and then from there, we really wanted to make it wireless and have a better visual feedback system. So I then developed the first uh, wireless prototype. And from there, that's also become a little bit sleeker. And I'm now working on this final prototype, which has a few more uh, functionalities. In. The inspiration for Sonify came from rhythmic entrainment, which is the natural human ability to kind of synchronize to music or any sort of rhythmical structure. Um, we do it naturally on a day-to-day -day basis in our sleep. Um, we have a circadian rhythm, which is when we wake up, when we go to sleep, when we eat. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of I found inspiration through really researching that and seeing where everything kind of stems from and then seeing if there's some way to some way to kind of pick out the kind of really nice elements of that and use it to as a as a as a music tool. Uh, the main the main device is built around a three axis accelerometer um, and it records rotational acceleration um, around the X, Y and Z axes. So when you move it it basically is putting out all of these signals and it's actually doing that at 300 times a second per axis. Um, sorry, more like 330. So it's putting out about a thousand pieces of data a second. Um, and the, basically the, the microcontroller inside, I'm using an Arduino chip, it converts those signals into Bluetooth signals, uh, which are then sent to the software. And within there, I can then convert that into MIDI, MIDI signals if I want to, or just control change parameters, um, or actually, uh, the kind of final goal is to have a standalone piece of software that will control and develop the music um, without the need of third-party plugins such as Ableton and Logic. I think if there's a possibility to make music production a little bit more expressive, um, incorporate a little bit more movement into it, then it should be done. It's not a new thing, it's definitely a kind of natural thing that has been happening for many, many years and it's just about kind of coming back full circle on itself. One of the processes that I really enjoy is um, taking found sound, popping it into the modular, and essentially on the fly editing um, everything that we've recorded. So. I've got sounds of the C, which we've used in the instrument. Um, coming out there, and really quickly, I can start really messing around with it, popping splices into each uh, waveform so I can start turning it, everything into percussion as well. Um, that's a really good way of quickly getting 
uh, interesting and intriguing sounds that we can use. Uh, so the main part of the project is actually the hardware, but the hardware doesn't do anything cool until you start plugging that into the software. And the software basically that I'm developing, it takes all of the information from the accelerometer and converts that into music changes. So the, the software that I'm developing within Max at the moment, it's, it's going to be completely generative. Um, and then just an example of some of the things that you can do with this. Um, I've built a simple arpeggiator here. And what I have going on is I have a range of, of values that it can output. Um, but if I lower the X axis, um, then the, the number of, of notes that it can choose from is only one. So it'll only ever play the same note. And as I increase that, um, that rotation like this, it will actually increase the number of potential outputs that it can have. So you have a wider range of notes. So let's just double check. Um, so if I'm outputting notes, so here you can see if I lower it, it's only outputting one note. And then as I increase that, it might start changing the range of notes that it can play all the way up to 12 different notes. And then I've also set it up uh, with rotation around this axis as well to add or subtract octaves. So you can kind of use it like this, hold it in your hand, move up to increase the range of the arpeggio and then move it to the left or to the right to change where the initial pitch starts at. Um, and this is just a demonstration of an example of something that you could do with this. In reality, there are hundreds if not thousands of different aspects that you could tie this to within the music production and generation.